First of all, you were just in Israel. Yeah. Okay, so you did an event in Israel. Several. Yeah, okay, so would mm -hmm. you, I, I would like to have you speak to that if you were. All right. Um, first of all, I have a history through my husband, Lawrence, who went to uh, Israel when it was still Palestine. Mm -hmm. Larry and I were married when I was just 19. Mm -hmm. And when he, uh, uh, a few years before that, he was 17 and he had gone to Palestine to start a kibbutz, mm -hmm. which was a socialist way of living. Right. And uh, to, uh, to uh, work the land. And he had... Um, was he a Zionist? Yeah. Uh -huh. And so they, they, they started a, a kibbutz. And uh, uh, he did a lot of... We, we, we were both going to go and live on the kibbutz. And right. he had come here to get his degree in uh, horticulture so he would know more about form. That's a long, long story, so mm -hmm. I'll try to cut it short. But when he died, uh, it was in October, and I wanted, he always wanted to go back mm. to see the promenade he had designed, to see how it was being used, and he wanted to visit the kibbutz. We used to send our children there every summer, mm. and he wanted to uh, visit the kibbutz for the last time, but he was too frail, and he couldn't go, and I said, I'll go for you. Mm. So uh, that's what brought me there. Mm. And it also determined some of the things that I did. Mm. But it was a, a you know, I come from a generation, I'm first, I'm first generation Jewish. So I come from a generation where I bring a long history with me. And when I, uh, when I came to Israel, I just felt, oh, I'm with my people and I'm with my land and I'm with all the people who are with me in Israel and on the land. It did not, in my mind, exclude anybody. Mm -hmm. It did not exclude the Muslims. It did not exclude the Arabs. It did not exclude the Druze. It did not exclude the Christians. It did not exclude the uh, Orthodox mm -hmm. uh, um, Christians. It was not exclusive. Mm -hmm. I said, I've returned to my people with all of us. Mm -hmm. And it was a very strong feeling that was at a gut level. Mm. And I, something I didn't, and it, you know, I didn't say, oh, I'm going to Israel to be with my people. It just happened mm -hmm. when I got there. And I was met at the airport by a whole group of friends. And so that's what brought me there, was mm. to honor Larry's memory. Mm. And um, uh, it was a powerful, powerful experience. The, the film called Breath Made Visible was uh, opening. Uh, I got a Fulbright, which enabled me to work in academic centers. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in contact with people in the peace movement. So everything kind of converged. Mm -hmm. that this is the time to go. I may never go again. Mm -hmm. And my family were enraged that I went. Why? No 90-year-old should be going on a trip like that in well, a country that is so dangerous, you know. Well, it's a hard trip. It's a hard trip, and um, uh, I, I didn't consider it dangerous, but it sounds like it from the media that you get here. Yeah. But I was determined. I just felt that I have to do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's how I got there. And then when I got there, I was so amazed at how different the country was from what I thought it was going to be like from the media yeah. here. And, and I noticed, at least my, no, what I noticed was that the political situation is really quite, to my taste, quite horrible. Yeah. It's very conservative, very right-winged. Yeah. There's the ultra-Orthodox um, ultra Jews, they're the Russian immigrants that mm -hmm. are very, very conservative. Uh, but then, uh, more than anything, were all the wonderful uh, peace movements going on. Yes. So I had a chance to participate and to lead many peace movements, including um, my planetary dance, which is very important to me mm. because uh, it's a uh, it allows everybody to participate, mm -hmm. whether you have any experience of all ages. 
And to be able to do the peace dance at a peace conference with people from representing 150 different organizations mm. with uh, Arab men participating. Mm. The women, of course, the Arab women were not, couldn't come in the room because they're not allowed to dance with the men. But the, the men were, were just uh, so powerful. The drummer was the best drummer in Israel, and they had a whole circle of drums because when people got tired of running, they'd come in and drum. It seemed like everybody was a drummer. Oh, that's so nice. And, uh, and the stories were, were just amazing. In the middle of the, the dance, which is very simple, because I'd, like I'd like to show you, because this is what I showed them. I said, this is a very simple dance. It's just based on, mm. on um, three, three circles. And if, if there are just a few, if there are just a few people, we can make directions. Mm -hmm. But if there are more than fifty people, we'll make a circle. So we made a circle because there were about a hundred people. And I said, each person needs to dedicate this run. You're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it for others. So each person needs to dedicate. What are you running for? Mm. You know, there has to be a purpose beyond your own enjoyment. Right. Uh, and, and so the first circle is, is, is a, uh, moves in this direction, and you announce to everybody why you're running. And I gave a little uh, preparation, uh, kind of an instant lesson. And I used the, um, uh, the, the two Rian man, mm. and I had them feel the, 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 you know, the lift of the Vitruvian sure man it. like this, and at the same time, the, the steadiness in the legs and the earth. Oh, beautiful. So they very quickly got into their bodies. Beautiful. And then they did the, that position as they called out their dedication. Mm. And I said, now look, we all want peace. So that's a given. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear peace. I don't want to have, I don't want to hear love. Shalom. <laughs> yeah, shalom. We all know that. I want to hear something personal, you in your life. Mm. And the things they ran for were very personal, very specific. I run for my grandchildren mm. and all the grandchildren in the world. That's mm. what I run for. Mm. And afterwards, uh, she wrote to me and she said, you know, that kind of shifted my life. It put it more in balance. I've been spending more time with my grandchildren, and I'm feeling so much better. Mm. So it was very simple. It wasn't a lot of woo-woo, I run for love, I run yeah, for yeah, peace. Yeah. yeah, one of those. And, but they were so intense about it. And then there's a second run. So if you can't keep up with the first run, you do a second run, and you start another circle. And the second run is a little easier. Mm. And then if you feel tired and you can't keep up with that, then I showed them the score, then you just walk. And so now you have three circles. Hmm. And if you don't want to walk anymore, you can just stand. You can play a drum. You can sing. And you just rest. And if you want to go back in, you can go back in. Well, do you, do you know that within 10 minutes, they had taken that simple pattern hmm. They were just so into it, but they began to make it their own. They began, was this in Jerusalem where you did This was in Sula. Uh -huh. uh, uh, no, no, I'm sorry. It was in a place right uh, next to Bethlehem. Mm. So you were in... You had uh, to go through... You were in Palestinian territory? Yeah. I oh, had, my goodness. I had to go through checkpoints. Were the Israelis able to go into the Palestinian... Yeah. They were? Yeah. Really? Yeah, we all went through the checkpoint. Oh, okay. I almost didn't get in because I didn't bring my... My, uh, my passport. Jews have to have their passport all the time. Uh, well, you know I, 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 something was stolen from me, and I said, well, I don't want my passport stolen. But it was so odd. Here are these young kids, you know, that could have been my grandchildren, telling me, this old lady, that I, I was a, 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 terrorist. a terrorist, or I could have been a terrorist. And I thought it was very strange. But it took me an hour to get through because the security is so tight. And I can appreciate that. Yeah. But, um, but oh my God, what happened in that dance never happened to me. We're doing that dance in about uh, uh, 40 different countries, wow. which is 
my greatest... At the same time? No, different mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. There's really a, a very satisfying legacy to know that there is a dance that people can do, they can all participate in it, mm -hmm. and it can be so meaningful. But um, uh, what happened is that they began to take it over and created little circles and different things going on. Mm. And it was wonderful to see them really, now this is mine, I can mm. make it. And then I would see a man, a, an older man, very frail, and he was uh, sobbing uncontrollably. And I thought, nobody's ever cried in the planetary dance. It's always been so uplifting. I wonder what he's crying about. So after the dance, I asked him, and he said, I'm sorry, I'm just crying for all the terrible things I did as a soldier. Yes. Oh, that was so, you know, so touching. And then um, uh, yeah. there was this other man who was just running and running and running. He would never stop, and he wouldn't have stopped at all if we hadn't just cut the dance off. And uh, I asked him, what was propelling him? What was motivating him to run like that? He ran like that for an hour and a half. Mm. And he said, um, I was in prison. Was he Arab? I was, yeah. He, I was in prison. He was an Arab uh, for 16 years. And I had a very small cell. But they let me out 10 minutes or more a day. And I'd go into the yard and I'd start to run. And he said, today, I could just run as long as I wanted, and I felt the beauty of freedom. Mm. And, and he said, I'm just so grateful. Now, there have been a lot of people that I met there, uh, Arabs that had been in prison, who are working for reconciliation. Yes. I was uh, in another piece uh, active activity, and the... Uh, uh, this is an Arab Jewish village where mm -hmm. they deliberately created a village of Arabs and Jews. And this man, and they, one of the things they do, they have a campfire every month and people from other neighboring villages come. But they tell stories. And this one man was telling the story about his only son who um, was killed by a terrorist mm -hmm. and what, how this changed his life yeah. and why he's working for peace. The man next to him was a terrorist, and he had been in jail for 16 years, and he's spending his life devoted to creating peace, mm -hmm. and he's re renounced terrorism is not the answer. There was a man sitting behind me with his wife, who was all, you, you know, a Muslim, in traditional dress, and he had his darling little son, and. They, there was a lot of music going on. There was Arab music, and people would you know, dance to that, and Israeli music, and then the two groups would play together. And he was bouncing his little child and having such a good time. And I asked him, um, what, what brings you here? And he said, I am so tired mm -hmm. of people killing each other. That's I right. want my child to grow up in a peaceful world. Yeah, they're exhausted. They're tired of it. Uh, yeah. So that you know, there was just. Well, I want to pursue something with you, if you if you permit me to, because when I looked at um, uh, when I trace your career, and I and I uh, recently saw your film, Breath Made Visible, 